Hello reformers and welcome to a world of ice and fire 4.1. This time around we're going to be doing something a little bit different and we are going to be playing as a wildling or at the very least we're going to be playing as a member of the free folk and we are going to attempt to ally ourselves with that faction. So let's go into character creation and find out what we're going to be doing. Okay so I generally will be playing on the static wars here because I feel like that makes this mod much more unique than regular warband so we'll play static wars and if that doesn't work out well then that's on me obviously anyway there we go let's gonna let's be a free folk and we'll be tall and I'm gonna be playing probably like a uh, combat focused character of some kind so we're gonna be doing something a little bit like I guess this and our fate I'm, I'm thinking okay so here's the thing either personal revenge that usually gives you I think strength or yeah you know, I think it's plus one or plus two strength and then we either have um, I think wonderlust might be pretty good as well because wonderlust is going to give us I think a little bit of extra speed on the map and I think that could be pretty good and we're gonna go for old gods of the forest because free folk they kind of you know they're kind of around there natural leader and warrior two different traits I'm gonna go for warrior I think because warrior it just kind of goes doesn't it so we're gonna go with that and we are going to call him Elias free Fremont <laughs> yeah because you know we went with Elias Mormont before and because he is obviously going to be joining the free folk this time around it kind of makes a bit of sense doesn't it so we're going to be going for that let's have a look at what else we want to do here well we probably want to get some riding skill eventually so we want to do that let's get another point in pathfinding as well I feel like pathfinding is probably going to be pretty important for us in the early game and otherwise I'm just going to spec some points into two-handed now I don't know what exactly I'm going to be using as we go forward because for me, I personally feel like A World of Ice and Fire, I know that a lot of people have said this as well, but a lot of people say that A World of Ice and Fire is extremely difficult, and we're going to find out just how difficult it actually is in version 4.1. If you want to try out this mod as well, there is a link in the description. So I actually don't know what I'm going to be picking in terms of hair. I don't really care, to be honest. Oh, there we go. I'm a, I'm a poet and I didn't know it, apparently. So yeah, we're going to do that. And we're going to make him a little bit older as well. All right, let's do this. Okay, so now this is the initial little, you know... Well, basically in native, this would be the bandit attacking us, but it's not the bandit. It is actually a bunch of Lannister soldiers. And this is going to be kind of difficult, so let's see how well we do. Those bastards are attacking anyone associated with House Stark. You must help us fight. Alright, so I guess I'm going to do that. However, these Lannister Knights, they certainly know what's up, and they are capable of doing so much damage that I'm going to be a bit worried about it, but hopefully we'll be able to gang up on them with all of these peasants, and we might actually have the opportunity to win a little bit, uh, I'll maybe do a little bit of damage here and there. We've got to get Elias ready for the battle ahead, and I'm a bit worried about it, to be honest. Whoa, the, the speed of the combat is a lot faster as well. I think the the settings have been changed, because I usually play on normal or faster, and uh, I think this is definitely faster, so yeah, let's see if I can maybe do a little bit of damage here and there. I, I'd like to just try and eliminate the archers as much as possible. Got to be very careful of these knights. Oh, there's actually a lot of them. Okay, they're, they're, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do this. I feel like these knights are probably going to murder me in one hit, so I have to be pretty careful. Nah, it's not enough. It's not enough. Oh well, never mind. You fall to the ground, unable to move. As you slowly lose consciousness, you can still hear the slaughter around you. You eventually awake to the sounds and wonder where you are. All right. Ah, there's Lord Edgar, of course. You're alive. You're one of the lucky ones. Not many others alive, I can tell you that much. Well, he seems to be pretty happy about that, kind of. Not really. Anyway, you must make haste and follow the King's Road North. Good luck, friend. All right, so we do have two Stark soldiers joining us, which is hopefully going to help us out just a little bit. And you can see here, we are now in King's Landing. So we are going to be making our way north because that's what we need to do for this quest. We have to go and tell Rob Stark what happened. And as you can see, we have Elias here with not that much HP, so... Uh, yeah, we're going to have to leave immediately because the Westerlands doesn't like us anymore. So we're going to have to move on. And uh, yeah, apparently they're just letting us know that we have problems with crashing. Then we know what to do. All right. So thankfully, 
because we are part of the free folk, we now have positive relation with them. We have some Lannister men following us as well. Do you think we should do you think we should fight them? I think we should fight them. Let's do it. Let's see if we can do this. We are not part of your fight. Leave us be and let us on our way. Or we, uh, well, we technically are playing a wildling, so I think we should probably select options that are a little bit more in keeping with that particular roleplay. So, I watched your men butcher those loyal to Ned Stark. I will avenge those slain and you will pay with your blood. Well, technically, the paying with your blood thing is a little bit more, you know, a little bit more uh, in keeping. And we gained some reputation, actually, which is pretty nice. Okay. So, let's see what we can do here. This is three versus two. This is probably the smallest fight we are ever going to be involved in in this mod. Unless I lose these two guys and I'm by myself and I go up against one other person. But yes, this is probably the smallest fight we will have. And let's see what we're able to do. So for the moment, I am actually pretty pleased that we were able to get to like the, uh, the mid ground basically. And now we're going to be able to deal with this guy, I think, pretty easily if I'm actually able to... Can I not move forward? I'm cheering for some reason. Ah, oh, yes, because I, I, I did the charge. The charge uh, command, I guess. And they've given that an animation of some kind, so they- oh, there we go. We actually did win this battle without losing anyone. Pretty amazing. <laughs> Usually that does not happen. Usually not at all. Okay, so we were able to do that very nice indeed. We can actually capture someone. And gazing at the maimed and the dead of your latest victory, you order your troops to bury the dead. It will take three hours. Share any loot as is common. I guess we'll do that. Why not? We don't really have any enemies right now except West Atla- Except West Atlantis. Right. Well, ah, uh, yeah. That, that's not. That's not really going to work. Plan your pa planning. My battle with the enemy is not going to work. I. I guess. Literally, we can just. Uh, well, there's there's not much to do. There's not much to do here except surrender. Really, there there is literally nothing else I can do right now. So I guess I'm just going to surrender. They're not really going to take that much, as you can see. They only took 53 silver stags, so it's not really a big deal. And we have seen a raven in the distance. It looks like it may have been injured. Okay, it could be it could be important. I will go and find it. You find the raven and notice tied to it a small piece of parchment with the seal of the hand of the king. This letter is for the urgent attention of Lord Stannis Baratheon. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. So we we can either take it to King Stannis or we can take it to Lord Tywin. Now, here's the thing. I don't really know whether I should take it to either one of these because if I'm role-playing as a wildling, it really shouldn't reach anyone. So I'm actually going to throw away the letter. All right. I don't know what that's going to do, but, uh, well, I guess we'll see. Anyway, there's the weekly budget, and we have finally been released, and we... Oh, oh, okay. Well, we have no one else, as you can see. No one else with me right now, and the Westerlands are firmly out for my blood. So let's see if I can escape them and make it all the way to the north. All right, so I've actually come across a band of, well, shall we say, thieves against some deserters or broken men in this case. And, well, I decided to help the broken men so we can hopefully get a little bit of renown from this and maybe, just maybe, weaken up the thieves in case we don't actually achieve any kind of victory here and then maybe finish them off ourselves. We do have to be very opportunistic here. I am not going to be doing that much raiding if... If it, well, if I get the opportunity, then I might be doing some raiding, for the, but for the most part, I am going to try and do some trading, because of course, A World of Ice and Fire is based on Viking Conquest, and Viking Conquest usually ha will have some pretty fantastic trade routes, and A World of Ice and Fire is no different, so hopefully we will be able to utilize those, those, those trades and, and see what's going on there, and uh, hopefully... Hopefully, then we'll be ro rolling in cash. Rolling in cash. And, uh, oh, these are actually Riverlands Man at Arms. I had no idea. Okay, well, this is actually going to be supremely easy then, by the looks of things. And uh, we'll see what we can do against these thieves. I, uh, yes, the animation to charge. Oh, it ca can it be cancelled? Seems like it can be cancelled if you do something in particular. But anyway, yes, it seems like so far we're doing a pretty reasonable job. I am going to attempt to get a horse as soon as possible, I think, because getting a horse is probably going to make it much easier for me to do everything. So if I do get attacked by a, a band of thieves or something like that, or even even higher tier bandits, I should be able to beat them 
just by outplaying them while on a mount. So hopefully that will, you know, hopefully that will come to fruition. If it doesn't, then well, then that's just how it is. Now, hopefully these guys, once we get out of this fight, will not see fit to attack me because they are aggressive to me as well, and I will not be able to beat them in a one versus five situation. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, there you go. We have defeated the enemy, and uh, thank you for your help. They didn't give me any relation with them. I'm a bit worried about that. Okay, so I'm actually going to just leave quickly and press on with my journey. I would love to be able to loot them, but I think that these guys are going to attack me pretty quick. So let me see if I can just move out of the way. There we go. Yeah, so those guys, they did capture a couple of the other thieves as well. So we kind of split it a little bit. I obviously did not get that much in the way of, well anything but we did level up so i suppose that's pretty decent so what we can do now is we can probably try and get a couple more points of strength and maybe another point in power strike or another point of riding skill might actually make more sense because as i say i want to try and be able you know to use a horse as soon as possible well, we finally arrived in Winterfell. No other fights uh, to be done, unfortunately. But we have now arrived, and hopefully we can tell him, uh, yes, that we have urgent news. I've traveled from King's Landing with two of your loyal soldiers. I'm here to tell you that your Lord Father Eddard Stark has been taken into Lannister custody for reasons of high treason. And we gain two renown from that. I guess that's better than nothing, I suppose. I mean, considering it is a very early quest. And I will try and see if I can do anything. Oh, some wildling scum have managed to pass the war. That's not very nice, talking about my people like that. Thank you very much. But, uh, well, I guess we can't really blame him, considering, you know all of that. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, you know what I want to do? I want to go into the inn here real quick because I would like to see if there are any companions because getting some companions will be pretty important for us. I don't think it's going to be that easy because we, well, don't have that much money. We don't have that much money at all. So I am going to be attempting to head into Free Folk territory. Do bear in mind they're not going to attack me because we do have positive relation with them. Wow, I did not expect to get this kind of progression immediately in this episode. I thought, ah, you know what, I'll have to do a couple of tasks for them. But no, it appears as though they are perfectly happy to recruit some random that just came in from Westeros. And they're just like, yes, we would like this random. And uh, apparently I'm going to join. Yeah, I am definitely going to join. Let's do it. Okay, so we are now at war against the Night's Watch, which <laughs> is probably going to be pretty hard for us. I don't know whether there are any bandit parties in this area. So I'm just thankful that in this game they don't have, like, you know, archers ready to shoot people as soon as they get close to some certain landmark or castle. Because those Night Watch rangers, they would murder me. They would absolutely murder me. So let's see. I did ask her for a task, but she was telling me to go to Essos and do stuff there, and I didn't really want to do that. So yeah, anyway, I've been recruiting a couple of people around here. It's been kind of difficult to find units to recruit, as most of them are very, very small in number, which is kind of weird. Oh, this is actually a town. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, let's head into the inn here, and maybe there will be someone we can recruit. Hello. Ah, thieves, brigands, I'll have their heads for this. What troubles you? My name is Hibbard. I am a traveling merchant and make my bread on the road. Well, that would be kind of difficult. It, we, how, do you, how do you make your bread on the road? I mean, it's kind of... Uh, you, you can't have a stove there, surely. Yes, I'm actually joking. I know he means money, I, I guess, doesn't he? Surely. Anyway, they took everything save my clothes. I would have fought them, but I'm no fighter. All right, well, join me. Uh, can you join me for free? Oh, wow. He joins me for 1,670? Okay. Stay back. What is it you want with me? I intend you no harm. I hope not. I've seen you have sort before. So desperate, willing to do anything. Um, <laughs> so you want my help? Ah, uh, a thousand. Ooh, these guys are expensive. They, uh, I think they might be, uh, they might be thinking that they are a bit too... You know, a bit too valuable than what they actually are, but I'm not going to say anything about it. Anyway, uh, I could j technically join the competition here. I might do okay, but I don't have that much money to even bet, which is a big problem. So I don't know how we're going to really work with that. 
I could buy some more bread actually. I don't really need bread at the moment. I mean, I could I could sell my dagger. I don't really need I don't really need that dagger. Thank you very much. Hmm. I I just don't exactly know what to do. I guess I could go into the Lord's Hall and see if I can speak to someone here. Maybe I can speak to a couple of them. Be careful of the White Walkers. Um. Oh. Okay. That's what I said. Stay south of the wall unless you want to become one of those things. Ah. Okay. So here's Mance Raider. I believe he is the ruler. Yes, he is. And maybe we will get a task from him. Ah, three knights watch trainee rangers as prisoners. Sure, why not? I would... Oh, hello. Yep, that guy's a giant. Yeah, if you didn't know, if you didn't know, then the free folk do have the option to recruit giants. He's busy apparently though, so we'll come back later. Alright, so I'm currently in the... Well, process of hunting down an outlaw band for the guildmaster at the nearby town. And, well, I ran across these thieves, so I'm actually reassured now that there are bandit parties in Free Folk lands, because I was a bit worried that there might not be any, and, uh, well, I'm very pleased to find that there are. And so, thankfully, we are going to be embroiled in a bit of a battle here against some thieves. These guys are not going to be that difficult to eliminate, I don't think. I think they're going to be pretty easy. For the most part but we do have to be a bit cautious because obviously there is an injury system in a world of ice and fire so if we get hit a certain way or you know something takes critical damage like one of our you know body parts like a, a leg or something we might be affected adversely so we do need to be a bit cautious of that but thankfully it appears as though our wildlings were pretty easily able to eliminate most of the enemies and there you go. Very nice indeed. Okay, so have we... Uh, yes, we did get some level ups and we are able to take a couple of these thieves prisoner as well. And we are going to get some level ups. Unfortunately, these guys do have a pretty significant amount of cash required to level them up. So I'm going to attempt... Uh, I guess we'll do this one. Yes, there we go. Okay, we're getting some rep reputation. Morale is always good as well, of course. And... Uh, we do have some other things here which might be kind of useful. I'm actually going to use the Battle Fork just in case we come across some people with cavalry. You never know. I think it's probably more likely to happen than not. So yeah, otherwise I'll just take all of this. And we will be selling it at the nearby town. And I will attempt to continue to hunt down those outlaws. Alright, so I'm taking a slightly different tact here, and instead of raiding the village fully, we're not going to be doing that because I feel like we're probably going to get outnumbered by the villagers because we don't have that many in our army. So instead, I'm driving away a couple of cattle and we're going to slaughter all of them so that we can get some, uh, well, some hides, which are obviously going to sell for a lot of money, and we're also going to get some meat as well. And this will probably be able to get us, if the particular marketplace that we sell them to has enough money, then we should be able to get a horse or maybe just something else. Anyway, I'm actually going to go to Winterfell, I think, to be able to do that because I think that would probably be the best idea. We might be able to get something. I think a horse is probably going to be the best investment that we can make. Oh, some Northern Clansmen. We might actually want to fight these guys. They do have three champions, however. Hmm, do we want to fight them? I mean, this is my current army at the moment. I, hmm, I, I don't know about that. They are just patrolling. They're kind of just ignoring me for the moment. So I think they probably could defeat me quite easily, I think. So yeah, we'll probably just leave them alone for the moment. And hopefully I'll be able to afford a horse after we get to Winterfell because a horse is pretty important for me at the moment. Oh, wow. Okay, these are pretty expensive, as you can see. I need 3,100 to be able to afford the most basic mount, which is pretty harsh. Mm, do you think I can afford it if I sell all of this? Probably not. Yeah, you can see here, I'm going to get 1,700, which is actually good. I mean, that's fine. I could technically get a lame donkey for that. But unfortunately, a lame donkey is not going to be enough to give me uh, that speed that I require. I mean, look at this. The difference in speed is just amazing. 22 versus 37, that's just too much. So we're going to go over here instead and just sell the various bits 
over to the goods merchant and I think I might actually trade a little bit here to begin with and we're gonna actually buy some furs buying some timber is also a good idea but I think for the moment I'm only gonna buy fur because I don't have that much money and I, I do need to buy a little bit more bread so we're gonna be gaining well, 1,200, which is actually a decent amount. And we also did get a little bit of, uh, uh, well, trade goods, I guess you could call it. And do we have anything else here? No, just the tavern keeper and a guard. What is this? Uh, it's just a guy that you can hire. I don't really want to do that. So otherwise, I guess we could go to Barriton. We do have a little bit of cash now, so it might make sense for us to go over there and also get some furs from there. Maybe we'll get some timber as well if it's cheap. But for the moment, we'll probably just focus on the furs if they are cheap as well. So let's see. Yeah, furs are really cheap here. Timber is a little bit cheaper than it was. But we're just going to buy furs 1,200 silver stacks for that. So that's pretty harsh. Otherwise, I guess we'll just go down to White Harbor now. All right, so we arrived in White Harbor and the first thing that we want to do is probably travel using the boat because I am traveling so extremely slowly right now on foot because even though I have three in pathfinding, which is not that much, but early game, you know, it's pretty okay. And uh, it's just making it kind of risky as well because I don't really want to get attacked by some random deserter party and be absolutely murdered. So we're going to just travel on the boat for the moment and we're going to go all the way over to Sisterton and hopefully this will be a place where we can sell our furs for a decent amount as you can see right here look at that it's already gone up to 400 so we're going to be selling most of what we can get our hands on well here and uh, yeah just a little bit more a little bit mm, yeah okay about that i think and then we will be we could join a competition here, actually. Do we want to join the competition immediately? I don't know whether that would be a good idea, because if we join the competition, it is maybe going to be great for us, because you're going to get a huge amount of money. But on the other hand, we might just waste it all. So let, let me actually just see here. Uh, oh, have a drink with me. Oh, no, go pass to someone else. <laughs> New player reputation is three. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So is this guy actually someone that can join us? Yeah, I think he can. He's going to be expensive. 2,100. Yeah, that's a bit too much. All right. So we're going to be doing a little bit of the tournament here. I'm a bit worried about it. So I kind of just looked at my character and I just thought, okay, we've got a decent amount of power strike. It's, it's not that bad. You know, it's okay. And... I think we might be all right. I mean, they're not going to give me any gear. That's the main issue here. But they are going to give me a horse, which I suppose is pretty decent. And maybe we'll be able to do something with that. Yeah, look at that. That's some pretty decent damage. I think I think we'll be okay as long as I can utilize the speed boonus. Boonus? <laughs> speed boonus. Yes. Mm, I said it. Speed boonus. Exactly. Anyway, if we can utilize the bonus from our mount, then I think we should have a pretty easy time of things. But obviously, many of the enemies that we're going to be facing here... Wow, look at that! 49 damage! 49 damage! That's exactly the reason why I think that getting a horse is going to make all the difference to us. And hopefully we'll be able to do that. Is this guy actually on my side? No, I don't think so. No, certainly not. Okay, well, hopefully that guy on the horse is going to be able to do something. I hope that I'll be able to get some more riding skill as well. And maybe a little bit of experience from this. Oh, there we go. Wow, nine damage. Yeah, something tells me I probably won't be able to complete this tournament in a victorious fashion. But who knows? Look at that. We actually did a decent job. Not bad. That is only the first round, however. So obviously, you know, we might have a a bit of an easier time. We are getting a horse every single time too, so that's obviously going to make a big difference. 56 damage with 232% speed bonus. That's pretty good. And then, well, maybe I can eliminate this person as well. They don't seem to be that well armored, most of them, or at least some of them don't, don't appear to be, and it is resulting in much easier fights than I would have expected. Maybe I can take out this guy as well. This is going to be kind of tricky, though, because bear in mind, I am extremely low. You know, I am level three, I believe. I'm level three, am I? I think so. And uh, that is not great. Let me actually just say, no, I'm actually level two. I'm actually level two. So I, it's even worse than it's even worse than I thought. So, yeah, that's going to be kind of difficult, especially considering this guy is coming at me with a full set of plate armor by the looks of things. And he is just wanting to follow me around. Uh, hopefully he's going to kill that guy. 
Yes, kill that fellow, and then I'll take you on after that. Oh, no. Okay, well, this is... This is interesting. Hmm. I, I don't know how this is going to go, to be honest. That guy has... Whoa, okay. This, this... Yeah, this guy is very special indeed. I don't think I'm going to be able to defeat him unless I can take out his horse. If I can take out his horse, then I think we might have a chance. Yeah, okay, you know what? Let me use my pitchfork. It's villager, peasant, villa or should we say villager slash peasant against knight of the realm. That's basically what we're doing here. Wow, that w okay. Did he parry me or something? I think he might have parried me there, or I just literally did no damage. Okay, I'm going to try and pick up this guy's sword. There we go. All right, I have an arming sword. This is a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. That's the kind of damage we want to get. Okay, that's not, but it's it's better than nothing. I will take it. I will not take that, though. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. 13. That's pretty decent. My proficiency is so incredibly low. I'm surprised I'm actually doing the damage that I'm doing right here. My horse took a lot of damage right there, and it's going to be moving much slower now. I was eliminated. Is that going to eliminate me from the tournament? Yes, it is. Well, hmm, that's kind of unfortunate. Can't really do much about it, so we're just going to travel to another port now. And I think the, the next one that we can go to is probably... Probably Gull Town, actually. Oh, it's going to cost 300, oh, 374. If only I hadn't participated in the tournament. Well, at least we know now that the tournament is a little bit too difficult for me at this point. Maybe if I had slightly better stats in Power Strike, I probably would have been able to take that guy out, but as you can see, he's he's using plate armor. That is just so good at this point in the game, and obviously he's much higher level than we are. Anyway, let's have a look and see how much I can sell this for. Yeah, there we go, another couple of, uh, well, actually quite a bit, very nice. All right, so we're gonna be, yeah, taking that. Can I buy, uh, I could buy a horse now but I don't know whether I really want to. Do I want to buy a horse now, or do I want to go back? And maybe, oh, you know what? You know what we could do? I'm thinking that, that, that this trade route is probably gonna work out to be one of the best that we've ever seen. So I'm actually gonna go to, I think Maidenpool is probably the place we can go to. 255, that's pretty cheap. So we can go over there. And I think then we'll be able to travel by land and we can buy some salt and then sell that in the north. So let's see if we can make that work. Does it have any salt here? No, nah, it seems like Salt Town is... Salt Town? I, I, what is it called again? I can't remember the name of that particular town, but you know which one I mean. And we get... Uh, no, we get a couple of companions here, I thought. Wait, maybe this guy? No. No, go past to someone else, thank you very much. Okay, so, yeah, salt pans, that's it. All right, so we've arrived in salt pans, and, uh, well, this gives me the opportunity. I haven't sold any furs here, I sold the rest in Maidenpool, and they didn't have any salt, so, well, you can obviously see that salt pans does, and we're going to be taking a whole bunch of it. Now, I think that the amount of salt that you can sell in the north is not as much, or at least you won't get as much profit as you would selling furs and timber and so on, but the salt and this trade route specifically is fantastic. It is really the best way that you can make money, with the exception of obviously winning tournaments. And uh, we will not speak of it. We will not speak of that tournament, thank you. And otherwise, uh, yeah, otherwise it's not too bad. I will try and avoid this though, thank you very much. Don't really want to get murdered by some Westerlands person, thank you. So, upon returning to Barrowton, unfortunately they do not have the furs available once again. They haven't refreshed just yet because we were so quick. But, as you can see, we can actually sell the salt for a pretty decent profit here. And we can actually trade this salt for the timber. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Because this timber will most likely sell for a much greater amount in the south. So, we're going to do that going to trade it for a little bit of cash. It's not obviously a huge amount or anything like that, but then we can go on to Winterfell and hopefully be able to trade the rest of the salt for, well, maybe some furs if they've refreshed by this time, or maybe not. I'm going to actually pass by those mushrooms. Generally, I'm going to try and be very, very 
well, frugal, shall we say, or just cautious in general of any of these events, because these events are going to be pretty harsh if you choose the wrong option. So let's hope that that will not be happening anytime to us. Anyway, let's go into the marketplace here. Am I being attacked right now? Yes, I am. I am being attacked by a bunch of bandits. That's not very nice of them, is it? Oh, well, they are bandits, so I suppose they can't be always nice. Wow, this is... this guy's really good, isn't he? Yeah, outlaw poachers. Ah, yes, outlaw poachers. They are... whoa, they're very deadly with their, with their bows, aren't they? Alright, so thankfully, I've been able to avoid his bow for the moment. And there we go. Ah, there's level 3. Finally! It took a while for us to get level 3, didn't it? Anyway. Uh, is that it? Is that it? Anyone else? Anyone else want a piece of me? I don't have a shield, so you're probably going to be able to kill me pretty easily. Alright, so th finally I've actually been able to get to the edge of the map here because I've looked all the way around the town. I'm not even going to say how long that took me to, to do that, but, you know, it took me a substantial amount of time. No enemies. No enemies came out of anywhere. There's no one left. So, I had to run to the edge of the map to be able to leave without the game just saying to me, Oh, you survived this encounter, and so on and so forth. So I'm a, I'm a bit, uh... Am I being attacked again? Uh... Oh, okay. Not entirely sure what's going on with that, to be honest, because I would have expected us to not have another bandit encounter. I think that might be a, a bug or something, maybe. I mean, it seems to be a bit weird for that to happen again. Okay, not entirely sure what's happening there, but I am being shot pretty harshly, and maybe I will get killed this time, which would not be very good, considering I survived the first time around. This guy's now running away which is weirdly enough, uh, kind of strange, considering he probably would have been able to beat me if he had stayed with his friend. There we go, we eliminated him. Okay, so now, am I going to get booted out? Because, as far as I'm aware, there are only two enemies. No? I can't even press tab. You see, that's the main problem. Well, let me tell you, I feel like Elias has had some very, very hard times so far. And, uh, well, this arrow in his shoulder is literally a perfect, perfect metaphor for that. Anyway, I'm actually just going to wait here for some time this time around and see whether that actually makes a difference. But yeah, it's, yeah, okay. It seems to be that particular time that you always get ambushed, I guess. I, I guess that's the reason. Anyway, as you can see, we do have furs here once again. Unfortunately, the furs are actually kind of expensive now, so I'm probably not going to be buying furs here. And instead, I'll just trade the salt and just get the cash, I, I guess. And instead, I guess we could go to... Uh, hmm, well, I, I guess we could go to White Harbor, I suppose, because we do need to go there anyway if we want to continue our trade route and everything, but what I do want to do eventually is go back to Wildling lands, obviously, and try and get some Wildling troops, because I'd like to get an army that is capable of doing something pretty fantastic. But unfortunately, as you can see, I only have 22 maximum company size, which is a bit disappointing. But anyway, I'm going to level up my strength once again. Let's get another point in... Another point in Power Strike, I think, is probably going to be a good thing for us, and we'll go for a couple more points in one-handed. And go on from there. Generally, basically what I want to do is I want to try and have as much money as possible so that I can buy a uh, an Enterprise as soon as... well, as soon as possible. And uh, then we will be able to have, hopefully, the mercenary wages from the Free Folk, and we will also have the Enterprise, and that is going to make all the difference. So hopefully we can buy some... yeah, there we go! Oh my! Wow, that is pretty crazy. Okay, so I'm going to sell the salt here, and we're going to buy a huge amount of, well, everything. We're going to buy furs, we're going to buy, well, we're going to buy some timber, not too much of it. I actually only have one more space, so I guess that doesn't make too much difference. Anyway, let's travel to another port, and I'm just going to demonstrate how much the timber actually sells for. I, I hope it's going to be a decent amount. But uh, let's just hope that Sisterton has actually refreshed their marketplace by this point, because I don't know whether it's been enough time for that to happen. Yeah, the mercenary payment is so pitiful. 60, really. 60. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so, yeah, they have refreshed. Fantastic. So they have 2,500. You can sell the timber for 387. 
don't think that's enough, but the furs are going to be selling for quite a bit. So we can sell all this. 2,400. Very nice. And I can go into the inn now and I can probably get a companion. Ah, this guy. Yeah, there we go. You're going to join me. 2,100. There we go. That's what, exactly what we want to see. Now, if I could go to the horse merchant, maybe I could buy a proper horse. What about this courser? Oh my, that's going to be a bit expensive, isn't it? Uh, I think that's a bit too expensive for my liking, so I'm probably just going to continue doing this trade route and continue leveling up a couple of wildling units, and then in the next episode, we will see where we are, and maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to take on a Night's Watch vassal, maybe alongside one of our own lords, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.